Welcome to The Apprentice, you're fired. With six tasks completed, we're now at the halfway mark in Lord Sugar's search for his business partner as 10 candidates draw closer to his quarter of a million pound investment. With the help of unseen footage, we'll be sorting through the leftovers of the street food challenge. Plus, we'll be seeing why, if you want to get this party started right, just invite Lord Sugar. <laughs> No party like a Lord Sugar party. <laughs> As ever, we have a flavour some pound to grill this week's candidate. Chef and entrepreneur Gino De Campo, restaurant critic Tracy McLeod, and comedian Fred McCauley. Welcome to your fart. <laughs> Tonight's task of creating a dish to sell on the streets of Edinburgh left one candidate in a stew. Katie, I'm afraid to say that having been in this position the third time, I'm not convinced. And so, Katie, you're fine. Please welcome Katie Wright. All of my notes are about interviewing Adam. Why? <laughs> Impossibly even here. I think Lord Sugar might have been a little bit sick and tired of seeing my face. You, your face was around, but and then you know, and then there's, and, you know, we all got pinned in the football thing, you know, and all that. Oops. Yeah, that's a simple mistake to make. Listen, we'll go through all of this stuff. <laughs> the uh, let's just see how it all ended for you. Let's relive the moment where it all went wrong. So where would you go then to start selling them? We went to the Rangers and Hearts game. <laughs> But whose idea was it to go to the football location first? I'm happy if that's fallen on my head if the football's like a bad yeah, we don't idea. Know. I've, I've pushed it. Makes yeah. sense. To be honest, I was I championed that. On what basis? You'd be a fool not to go for football. How much were they? Well, I'm thinking more like seven ninety nine. Now I know that that is probably going to make me look awful. They don't pay that for a striker there. <laughs> <laughs> he listened to you, and the information you gave him was wrong. I gave him lots of... Lots yeah, I don't want to hear anymore. It was very tight. But the football game, you you, you attend football I matches? I do, yeah. At a chintzy West London club, by I, any chance? Yes, Fulham. Delightful. Yes, Were yes. the burgers at £6? I can't remember specifically, but, uh, yeah, it's not £2.99. No, it's not, no. <laughs> no, it's £7.99 for a boiled pasta. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought that we had the sales ability to be able to do that. And I thought if we started high, we might be able to go down rather than the other way. Yeah, although you did actually start high and then went, try to get a little bit more out of it. I suppose, yes, I was trying to feed it a little bit dry. But that is another thing we're getting. Do you know you, you and your own food business? Um, yes. Was, how do you think Katie did in the task? You know what, I, I think nothing wrong about going to a, a football match, by the way, you know, selling meat or pasta. I, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's okay, you can do that. Not at 5.99. Uh, or 7 or, or even 7 <laughs> that, that, was, that was a bit too much. I, you know, I think if you, can get, if you can produce a product that it costs no more than 50p, then you're going to have to sell it cheap. You know, it's very rarely that you find somebody who come as, it comes up with a product that costs 50p and they sell it for £8, not at a football match. So uh, <laughs> I, I think you would have done really well if it was 250 299 you sell it a lot. It's called impulsive buy. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody got two pound fifty in the pocket, I'll buy it. If I don't like it, I throw it away. But you know, you, you would sell it much more. The, it was what time of the day was it? Was the Saturday? Um, it was at the wrong time of day. I can't remember exactly. It was in a morning game rather than an afternoon. <laughs> it was. Game. I mean, that's the difficulty, of course, in selling food is that people have to be a little bit hungry. Yeah, there is. But both teams <laughs> have this. Both teams are going. Want some dinner? And people are going. I have nope. just rolled out yeah. uh, our <laughs> breakfast. And stuff. I think we were what? hoping people might go to the pub a little bit early, and then they might, you know, fancy a bit of carbohydrate. Tracy, what did you think? 
I think it's a shame that Kate is here. I mean, I think she made one big mistake, which was to stake her entire reputation <laughs> on that football match. But, you know, there were other mistakes made by other people. You know, the, the decision to go off on the bus and miss that crucial lunchtime market was, uh, was another big decision. So, although Katie, you know, selling uh, gourmet food, not that it was that gourmet, outside um, a Hearts um, Rangers football match is possibly the worst place in Britain to try and uh, sell it. You know, I, I, feel, I feel sorry that you're here. Fred. Katie, I don't think you needed to, to worry uh, about the football supporters not having been for a pint, even though it was a 12.30 kick-off. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think the, the fundamental error selling food uh, to a football crowd in Scotland on their way to the match is that they were going to need both hands, and that means that we'd have to put their drink down. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I want to stereotype the Scots. <laughs> but I think that was the problem. Katie, before we dissect this task, let's look back over your apprentice journey, most of which took place in the boardroom. <laughs> it is a difficult decision to make in this first uh, task. Liliana, you are fine. <laughs> Katie, it's the second time you've been sat in this last three, right? I don't know whether there's some kind of message coming to me already about you. Mm -hmm. Michael, you're fine. <laughs> Katie, having been in this position the third time, you're fine. Is I tell you face. what, I think my forehead has a conversation of its own. I didn't even realise, but it's there and it's chatting away. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm watching it, I'm going, shh, shh, shh. You know, there's no need for that. But you weren't bottling stuff up. You weren't going, hide the pain, hide the nervousness. It was, you were, like, rocking, uh, praying. <laughs> I don't know if you were a religious person, but you're there, weeping. There's, like, <laughs> practically rosary beads going through your fingers. Like, oh, always told me I wore my heart on my face, but I just didn't quite believe them. The level to which? Oh, take it from the nation. Man, yeah. <laughs> we were going on a journey with you every time. Um, we were like, oh, say, why? Well, is this going to be me? Oh, it's not me. Oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> I can't lie, anyway. That's yeah. Do you think there was a hex sign on you? Do you think there was, like, a target on you when they thought, well, if we bring her in, he's going to do this? Well, I've seen you before. Yeah, I, I think I had a very strange little game plan, which was that I decided after the first week that, you know, my humour is... is very, I suppose, self-defeating. And I went back after the first board year. I was like, guys, don't worry. You know, if, if we lose a time, just bring me back in. Lord Sugar's gunning for me. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know why I did that. Looking back on it, <laughs> looking, looking back on it, I'm thinking, duh. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it, she was in so often, do you think it was, it was, it was going to be inevitable? Okay. I think the reason that Katie was in so often was uh, you put yourself up for things. You were a participator. And uh, I think for that reason, you, you were kind of high impact and you, you were taken in. I mean, I really admired the fact that despite being in the losing team the first two weeks, you, you were transferred to the boys' team and you put yourself up as team leader. And it took a real confidence to do that. And I thought that you're a great role model for, for women in business. You were human as well as being effective. And I think that the fact that you've gone out so early doesn't really reflect your potential. Thank you. It's great the way you lost the first two tasks, went to the winning team, and then they lost the task. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was great. Yes, uh, that was me. The, uh, uh, on this task, Stephen had a very interesting week. Um, he thought he'd cracked it with the bus idea. That's a, that's a task winner, that. Yeah. High fives all round. Hang on, let's do the next promotion. We've got a strategy. Yeah. OK, everybody, thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. I oh, blimey. <laughs> Let's do it. Come on, Phoenix. Come on, Peter. Fly at the Phoenix. Come on. Just in time. Oh. No. <laughs> hey. Shot. Steve. Hello. We need you to drag us some customers in. Problem is, we missed the last bus. How long did the optimism last? How long did the this is a task winner? I mean, how far into your pitch 
Yeah. Was that the point he went, no, this is, this is actually stupid. This is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just that. took a long time to get back on the bus and then to travel round. And obviously, when we weren't getting anyone off the bus because they'd already eaten their lunch, you know, it was quite apparent. <laughs> Gene, do you, what did you make of this plan? Is it, is it... The worst plan I've ever seen, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are on an open bus that they wouldn't enjoy the town, they wouldn't enjoy, you know, to see the building. I didn't want you, you pop up with the kind of a pizza uh, uh, thing there, trying to sell meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, you know what? If I was there, I would throw all three of you out of the bus <laughs> from the top. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're a beautiful woman. I would have used you in the football. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. At the game, yes, nice. yes. The, um, but a food pan, those, are those tour buses, do they ever people step off and go, I need, me I need food from a van now? No, I don't think Maybe. so. Even, even with the, uh, you know, the people coming up and trying to sell them on, on the top deck of the bus, uh, that, that was never going to work. Um, dressed as you were, you know, because, again, without stereotyping the Scots, there was a lot of people gave up drink that day. Uh, who, uh, did you just see a four-foot pizza going by? <laughs> 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 Is that no more for me? <laughs> You're done. Tracy, another great plan? I mean, marketing, from a marketing point of view, it was a disaster, really, from start to finish. I mean, street food is, like, the most happening food movement in, in the country at the moment. But it yeah. seemed like you'd cooked it all in advance yeah. and you were just heating yeah, it up. And that much. really isn't the spirit of what street food is about. It's certainly not the spirit of the gourmet <laughs> task that you were set. Yeah. You missed the smell as well. You know, street food is about smell. That's what it is. You know, the only thing you had to do is to get a frying pan, fry a little bit of rosemary, fry a little bit of fresh Italian herbs to get people around you excited about this little band selling food. Yeah. You know, what you prepared, it didn't, you know, I can imagine it didn't have any smell around. Mm. It was just a bunch of people trying to sell meatballs. The most interesting thing I felt about Stephen actually wasn't necessarily that, but just how slippery he was in the boardroom. Well, what happened was, well, Sugar, I'm not the man to, to carry on things if it's not working. And I quickly made a decision. I said, Adam, well, I'm actually going to go out and sell at the front. Sack off this bus tour and all that now. Yeah, yeah, but you know now. that a burger You've a football You've got two mate. researchers, two man. Four quid for a burger, that's what you're spending. Tell the truth, at a football game, it doesn't take Einstein to work out that these yeah, lads yeah, will be past the truth. Forth. Just a um, quick one, mate. Katie believes you should be going at a much higher price, Adam. 7 99 Okay, let's if you try for that. And we move on, yeah? <laughs> Now, is he guilty of rewriting history a bit here? Was he, I he's... think so. I think Stephen was playing a very good game. Oh, I yeah, basically, not, none of this happened. None of this happened. Yeah, no, I, I was the one who made all the decisions. He wasn't, though. He... No, no. Well, I mean, obviously, he was um, heading up the sub-team. But, um, yeah, he was, he was very good at summarising and very good at pointing the blame, I suppose. And he did it very well. And, you know, I didn't play the game well, and I'm sat here, and he obviously did. So it, it depends which side you come from, really. Yes. Now, the, uh, the politics of it, was that obvious in this, more obvious in this than we've seen in a few weeks? I mean, that was the most startling example, wasn't it? Stephen saying that he was going for a lower price when, in fact, we'd actually seen him um, uh, passing on the information that they thought he thought it should go for higher. So, but he's done it before. I mean, he was the one that really should have taken the blame for the misspelling of Bellissimo. You know, he was completely, that was my idea, and then found out in the most embarrassing of circumstances while actually pitching it to, you know, a potential buyer, he kind of came out and went, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have to look at that. You know, he didn't actually <laughs> say, yeah, I made a mistake, because he never does. He, he always deflects it. No, my, as far as I recall, he picked up the bottle of Blissmo and stared at it really hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, at the moment, he just went, you, why did you do this? <laughs> There was an L there, I'm sure, a minute ago, uh, <laughs> as if that would cure it in some way. But can we fault him for being political? Uh, no, I mean, he's, he's in there to, to win, like everybody else. But uh, I think what we did see this week was a, a very clear case of boardroom manoeuvring. Because as Adam's thinking about who might he bring back in, I don't know how many times Stephen suggested the word azar. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just while well, you think about it, azar. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and azar, you, were, you missed that, you did nothing. Azar! <laughs> <laughs> Well, if his R's worth bringing back in. <laughs> Do you admire it? Do you admire the machinations of it? The Machiavellian intent? No, I don't. I, I, I don't like people like that, sorry. I, uh, uh, I have businesses with, with business partners. You know, when you're in a boardroom, the, 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 one, the one thing that you want to hear is the truth. Right? Because then you can do something about it. The one thing, the last thing you should hear is to people telling you stories or make up stories or trying to cover themselves. Because then, at that point, business-wise, there is nothing you can do about it because you don't know where you are. Um, so, Katie, I, I like you. Thank 
you know, you, you, you have. Uh, <laughs> <are> you? <laughs> you truly have meatballs. <laughs> and uh, uh, I like that. I think, uh, Gina, while you were saying to Katie that you liked her, her forehead was saying, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Let us move on from Stephen to the one who got away. A choreographer one week and a <laughs> gourmet chef the next. This is quality food. I don't want any junk served up here. I keep going back to pasta. It's cheap. It's a cheap meat. Cheap? It, it's cheap. But <laughs> it's just like that taste, you know. It's... Cheap, cheap, cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. Cheap rabbit. 